Let's dive back in here, developing literacy in the disciplines, a little more vocabulary. Language Standard 5, as a reminder, reads, demonstrate understanding of figurative language, word relationships, and nuances in meaning. We know that in order to successfully read in a particular discipline, students must develop a rich understanding of the concepts and overall terminology of that given discipline as well as how words in that discipline relate to one another. Meaningfully and regularly addressing this standard in the context of a classroom is crucial to literacy development. It also supports reading standards 1 through 5 and impacts student discourse. Language Standard 6 reads, acquire and use accurately general academic and domain-specific words and phrases. Those should be sufficient for reading, writing, speaking, and listening at the college and career readiness level. Demonstrate independence in gathering vocabulary knowledge when considering a word or phrase important to comprehension or expression. Well, all of this is to say that students need to learn a lot of discipline-specific terms, and it's our task as teachers to teach them to them. They need to learn a lot of words. We also know that when we do teach them a lot of words, if you recall, the more students understand about these terms, the easier it will be for them to understand information they may read or hear about the topic. As a result, they may learn new information related to that subject much more readily. So here are our learning targets. We will focus on the instructional strategy known as semantic feature analysis. According to Stahl, 1999, vocabulary knowledge grows gradually from the first meaningful exposure to a word to full and flexible knowledge. Every time students encounter a word in context, they remember something about that word. As they repeatedly encounter a word, more and more information accumulates about that word until they have a vague notion of what it actually means. And as they gather more information, they're able to define the word. The more activation a student has around that word, as you recall, the faster and more automatically it will be read. Semantic feature analysis is a semantic-based instructional strategy for vocabulary development. It organizes information in terms of the semantic features they do or do not possess. Semantic feature analysis supports students' efforts to understand relationships amongst key concepts and vocabulary, in particular, the many dimensions of meaning that may be associated with a particular term. Based on selected attributes or semantic features with the use of a table, a grid, or the like, students analyze similarities and differences among related concepts. This proves crucial to comprehension. For the majority of concepts do not represent a specific event or object, but a class that is linked by common elements or relationships. One purpose of the semantic feature analysis is to support students' determination of the similarities and differences between words that share common characteristics, those that are conceptually related. Essentially, an SFA provides a template for students to determine the critical attributes of terms. Now, many studies have supported its effectiveness as an instructional strategy. Toms Bernowski in 1983 conducted a study with over a thousand fourth through sixth grade students which revealed that students who learn selected vocabulary words using semantic feature analysis and semantic mapping uh, achieved significantly higher than students who learned words through contextual analysis. Anders, Boss, and Philip in 1984 found this to be true as well with learning disabled students in 10th and 11th grades. Those who used a semantic feature analysis rather than a dictionary definition sentence writing approach perform significantly higher on content vocabulary and reading comprehension tests. Contenary vocabulary varies greatly from that of the vocabulary selected for instruction in literature-based courses. Armbruster and Nagin in 1992 argued in favor of the three distinct differences between vocabulary in reading lessons and those in content lessons. One is how closely the meaning is tied to the purpose of the lesson. The second is the degree to which the vocabulary represents familiar concepts, and the third is the degree of semantic relatedness of the vocabulary words. The types of powerful uh, instruction documented in research need to become more commonplace and frequent in all of our disciplines. Vaca et al. in 2014 noted, words are labels for concepts. A single concept, however, represents much more than the meaning of a single word. It may take a thousand or even thousands of words to explain a single concept. And as we've discussed, in order for students to learn new words well enough to improve their comprehension of written materials, they must have multiple opportunities to build both conceptual and contextual knowledge of words and relate this knowledge to their background knowledge. Moving away from that definitional level, a focus on conceptual knowledge acquisition requires that students engage in meaningful, purposeful interactions with the terms. Fortunately, a semantic feature analysis is an effective procedure for demonstrating the relationships among concepts within a category as well as the uniqueness of each word. 
students improve their vocabulary and categorization skills by building on their existing schemata. The semantic feature analysis is an incredibly effective organizational and visual strategy for students to organize their understanding of how words and concepts are related and interrelated. First, a topic or category is selected. Then words are listed in that category. Features or characteristics are then listed across the top of the grid, which allow them to use that as an organizer on the oppositional axis. Next, students are guided through the matrix where each word in the column is analyzed feature by feature. Students can place a plus or a minus, a question mark, a yes or a no, a true or a false for each term and its fe feature accordingly. Now, additional words and features can also be added as the lesson progresses. You might consider asking students to suggest their ideas for words that fit the category as well as other features that apply to the words on the list. The completed grid then serves as a fantastic basis for discussion, synthesis, evaluation, and writing. Students might use one of several options to indicate whether each feature applies or does not apply to each term. Now here's a visual of an SFA template. Here's a sample semantic feature analysis put to great use in a family and consumer science class. The teacher also wisely created a life-size <laughs> Uh, grid and paste it on the wall for students to access during class. And here's a completed semantic feature analysis in math. Best wishes as you put these to use in your discipline.